Hello, welcome to our program. I'm Larry Wessels of Christian Answers, and I want to thank you for being with us today. We're going to cover uh, an interesting subject, one of great interest to me since I put so much time and effort into it, but uh, the title of the show is called Answering Islamic Apologists. Now, many of you I know don't know what an apologist is. That sounds like a really weird word, and you might think, well, is that somebody that apologizes for something? But uh, really, an apologist is someone who uh, defends his position against something else. Uh, in this case, a religious apologist is someone who uh, asserts that his religion is true, and he also protects his religion from attacks from other people who say, well, your religion is not true. And he proclaims, you know, like an evangelist, that this religion is the, the true religion and all other ways really don't stack up when you check evidences and, and, and facts and things of that nature. So an apologist usually brings in and marshals different information to try to prove his position. And so what we're going to do here in this series is uh, basically, as Christians, be trying to answer these Muslim apologists who, who claim that Islam is the true way of, of, of God and of religion, and that Christianity and other religions are false. And so we are, uh, we are simply, as, as concerned Christians, going to try to answer the arguments and accusations made by Muslim apologists and try to uh, arrive at what we hope to be the truth. And uh, joining me in this particular series on answering Muslim apologists is uh, my uh, associate with this ministry and our director of research, Steve Morrison. Great to have you, brother. Thank you, Larry. As we continue this journey through Islamic apologetics, mm -hmm. I will introduce our uh, viewers right now to uh, Dr. Jamal Badawi. He's our main focus of this series. We will be talking about uh, other Islamic apologists, but he, Dr. Badawi, Dr. Jamal Badawi, is our number one focus here for the purpose of this video series. He is uh, director of the Islamic uh, Information Foundation, located in Canada. Information here, and uh, he put it. He puts out these tape series, and I happen to listen to this particular tape series and several others which are behind us here. But uh, uh, this is a 16-hour tape series. Uh, it's the audio soundtracks from his television shows where he's dealing, at least on this particular uh, package that we'll be analyzing right now, uh, package number 8, Series K, Jesus, Beloved Messenger of Allah. So we're going to be dealing with this uh, particular uh, tape album in this show today. We're picking up where we left off from the last show. Like I said, this is show number 5. I'll put Dr. Badawi back over here. And then uh, we'll get into the subject material at hand. This is... Uh, we're, we're, we're starting with tape number seven in the album I just showed you. Uh, those little notes were some of my annotated notes because I have listened to all of these tapes, and I've listened to a lot of these tapes twice over. Uh, we have just behind us here over 48 hours worth of material, and uh, we're trying to give a synopsis form of this and then uh, try to answer some of the arguments and accusations that Dr. Badawi has made in these tapes. A brief recap of our previous show number four in this series, here shows a response to some of Dr. Badawi's points made on his study tape number six. Badawi tries to refute Deity of Christ Bible verses. Badawi mentions many of the verses that merely indicate Jesus might be divine without referencing the verses that prove Jesus is God to be worshiped, in particular in the rest of the New Testament. Philippians chapter two, verse five, Jesus and the Father have the same nature. Hebrews 1.6, Jesus is rightfully worshipped by God's holy angels. Hebrews 1, 8 and 9, Jesus is rightfully called God. Acts chapter 7, 59 through 60, Jesus is prayed to. Colossians chapter 1, 16 and 17, everything in the world was created and sustained through Christ. Colossians chapter 1, verse 19, the fullness of deity is in Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. Titus chapter 2, verse 13. Jesus is called God. Revelation chapter 5, 8 and 9. Revelation chapter 22, verse 20. Jesus is worshipped in heaven. 
Since the Gospels were not written by Jesus, no evidence Jesus said those things? Badawi has interesting logic here. By the same logic, there is no evidence Muhammad said anything because everything Muhammad said was written down by someone else, since Muhammad probably could not write. If Dr. Badawi thinks a follower of Muhammad could truthfully write down what he said, but none of the followers of Jesus could truthfully write down what Jesus said, he is not only inconsistent, but overly biased. No quote of Jesus saying, I am God, worship me. Jesus would send his angels in Matthew 13, 41, which are the angels of God, Luke 12, 8 and 9, chapter 15, verse 10. Jesus said he would judge the world, Matthew 24, 31 through 46, Matthew 25, 31 through 33, John chapter 5, verses 21 through 22, verse 27. Yet it is God who is coming to judge the world. Psalm 50, verses 1 through 6, Joel 3, 12, Deuteronomy 32, 35. A non-Christian might wonder if these verses were somehow added much later. However, an ancient Bible manuscript called the Bodmer II Papyri, 125 to 175 A.D., has preserved many references from the Gospel of John as presented here in our chart. Deity of Christ verses, quote, subject to interpretation, end quote. This logic is interesting, as it is equally effective to say Quranic verses are subject to interpretation. For example, many Muslims, especially Alawites and some Sufis, interpret the Quran and say that drinking wine is okay. False interpretations based on preconceived ideas and non-contextual readings are always a possibility and problem for any religion. Badawi frequently quotes Bible verses that say God is a father. It is curious that Badawi quotes many Bible verses that use the word father, yet Islam is firm that Allah is not a father and Allah has no children. We have Bible manuscripts preserved today among the Dead Sea Scrolls that mention God as father. These manuscripts date before the time of Christ. Badawi ignores the, quote, father, end quote, discrepancy with his own religion. Starting with tape number seven, which is entitled, uh, More on Claims. Point A, Badawi does not believe John's vision in the book of Revelation. He says someone who has visions may not be reliable or accurate. Wait, didn't Muhammad have visions? Well, we'll get into that. Oh, okay. Uh, point B, in John chapter eight, Verse 58, Badawi says that Jesus existed only in the mind of God. When Jesus said that in John 8, 58. We'll talk about that. Uh, point C, Badawi likes to quote only the Revised Standard Version of the Bible. I wonder why. Okay, D, Badawi quotes what he calls biblical Christian scholarship, such as John Fenton. E, Badawi says there seems to be a deliberate attempt by biblical writers in the New Testament to put Jesus in a different category than others before him, such as David. As Badawi says, the term Messiah means deliverer or anointed, and that term can apply to others also. F. The word perfect does not mean perfect, according to Badawi, just human. G. The term Son of God is used of many people in the Bible, and therefore Jesus being the Son of God cannot be a reference to divinity. H. The term Lord is used in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 5, quote, Lord's many, end quote, and therefore Jesus being called Lord is nothing unique. And finally, I, Badawi is tired of hearing Christians quote John 14.6, where Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by him. Uh, Badawi says it does not mean what Christians say it means. Someone who has visions might not be reliable. By what criteria is Dr. Badawi dismissing Revelation? Muhammad claimed to have had visions. If you discount John solely because he had a vision from God, you can likewise discount Muhammad. Jesus existed only in the mind of God, 
in John chapter 8, verse 58. God knows all of the future. Therefore, everyone existed in the mind of God before the world began. Dr. Badawi's biased interpretation makes Jesus' words meaningless here. Badawi uses the RSV Bible. The Revised Standard Version of the Bible was translated before many ancient Bible manuscripts were known. The RSV was translated by people who did not necessarily believe it was the Word of God. It is unclear why Dr. Badawi does not prefer a more accurate translation. In Quranic English translations, the Arbery translation is considered inferior to A. Yusuf Ali or other official translations from religious authorities in Saudi Arabia. Selective Citation John Fenton was not a devout Christian, but a theologically unorthodox heretic. To say the, quote, Muslim, end quote, Elijah Muhammad, founder of the racist black Muslim sect, was a Muslim scholar, would not be any more honest than Badawi's argument here. Right away, I think you can tell from the notes and the points he's making, he doesn't have a, a very high opinion of the Christian position concerning Jesus and uh, other matters along this line. All right. How would we know if Badawi's claim is true or not, that Jesus did not say he exists in the mind of God? Well, why don't we see what Jesus himself said? If Jesus himself showed he existed uh, before he came to earth, in his own words, and that would seem to prove Badawi as wrong here. And in John 17, 5, in what's called the high priestly prayer, Jesus is praying to the Father and says, And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. So Badawi probably forgot Jesus' words here. That's right. Or if he sees him even now, he would say, Well, John said that and probably put words into, you know, it was not really but, but, the real John, it was someone else, and they put these but, words but, into his but, mouth. But, but it was Jesus that is claiming, and so Badawi's Jesus is totally divorced from the Jesus who is all throughout the, 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 the Bible, and so maybe you should call him a different name besides Jesus if he's not talking about the same individual. Right, because every time you bring up a Bible verse with one of these Muslim apologists, that shows clearly what they're saying is not true, biblically speaking. Mm -hmm. They simply discard the verse you bring up, even though they acknowledge it's true what you're saying the Bible verse says, and the verse is there. They simply say, well, someone else put that verse in there. It wasn't John, and Jesus didn't really say it. Mm -hmm. and he never said that. Someone else put those words into his mouth later, and that's mm -hmm. how they'd argue against that. Okay. You know, but, of course, that kind of argument is totally unsubstantiated, uh, not verified by history. It's just a simple claim uh, that I could, uh, somebody could walk up to me and, and, and tell me, uh, uh, well, I'm the, I'm the uh, king of the United States, and I've been reigning over these, this country for a hundred years. And uh, he can claim that all he wants. He can just say that. Uh, and I could sit here and, and go, well, let me see. Now, history says that you look like you're about 30 years old. You don't look like you're 100 years old. And in the United States, last I saw, they, they had presidents. They didn't have kings. Uh, so analyzing your statements just from a historical uh, background and, and, and information about the government we're talking about here for the country you're describing, uh, what you've just stated is not true. Well, see, Badawi is like this guy that claims he's the king of the United States for the last 100 years. He makes claims and statements, and he says it in such a breathtakingly dogmatic way, someone that doesn't know what's going on might just believe him, you know? <laughs> but, but just because you say something dogmatically in a breathtakingly sincere way, that doesn't mean that what you're saying is actually true, no more than the guy that says he's king of, uh, of the United States for the last hundred years. Or uh, if I were to say I'm Napoleon or S Julius Caesar, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? you got to have something to back up your arguments. So if you say that anything Jesus said wasn't said by Jesus, if that were allowed as admissible, then somebody else, an atheist or whoever, could say that anything said by, in the Quran wasn't really uh, from right. Muhammad at all. it's not as valid. And what's interesting here about Dr. Badawi and some of these other Muslim apologists, they will accept some of the things Jesus said if it supports their cause or in their minds what they think supports their cause. So like when Jesus would say something like, uh, my father is greater than me. Well, see, they like that. Yeah. Because they... 
you know, that's a that's a favorite Jehovah's Witness text. But anyway, they like that because they can say, well, Jesus really said that. Now, he didn't say the stuff Steve was talking about, but he said this because he's saying that the Father's greater than him, showing that he's not God. Yeah, and, 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 and actually the truth is the Father was greater than Jesus on earth because mm -hmm. Philippians 2 says that Jesus emptied himself. Exactly, but as you just mentioned, you're giving a, a different connotation and interpretation based on context of the scripture and mm -hmm. the passages unlike what the, the Jehovah's Witnesses or the Muslims in this case are doing with that verse right. and putting a totally different slant on it. But see, you see, the point of the matter is, I'm saying the Muslims will pick and choose certain phrases and sentences that Jesus said that they like, and they'll say, well, that's authentic. Mm -hmm. But something they don't like, they say is not authentic. But then again, where's their evidence to take one and leave the other? They don't have any. They just say it, but they don't have any evidence to back up what they're saying. Because mm -hmm. as we said over and over again, the manuscript evidence proves all these things. Like our viewers at home, we can see behind us here uh, that uh, we have pictures of Josh McDowell's books and things behind us here. Uh, plenty of good Christian apologetic works out there available for our Christians to get their hands on. And the Muslims just can't deal with this kind of information from an archaeological explanation from the all the thousands of prophecies in the Bible to uh, the manuscript evidence. It's all there. And it ends up, when you're dealing with Muslim apologists, of them just making these, these dogmatic statements. Uh, but they're sort of like the king who has no clothes. Mm -hmm. The king thinks he has clothes on, but he's naked as a jaybird. And that's what these arguments are like coming from these Muslim apologists. Uh, Steve, uh, for the sake of the audience, wants you to... Uh, take out this uh, argument here about the word perfect does not mean perfect according to Badawi. Okay, well, and I, uh, I'm not sure where he's coming with this. There are actually two Greek words for, for perfect, and one Greek word is perfect, like sinlessly perfect, and the other Greek word is like uh, mature, or where you ought to be, like a baby might be perfect if he's perfect as a baby, but you don't want, want him to, to stay as a baby. Well, he's saying that, you know, the word perfect doesn't really mean perfect, it just means you're human. That's kind of like Guts it, uh, guts it of meaning. And, and it's like any time that you interpret something, be it literature or the Bible or I guess even the Quran, if your interpretation makes the entire thing totally devoid of any meaning whatsoever, then you have to question if, if that was really the, what the author intended and if you're, in, you know, if you're just making up your own interpretation because the goal of interpretation, be it the Bible or other literature, is to try to find out this is what the author meant when this was written. Okay, so what about his argument about the word Lord is sort of like in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 8. There's lords many. Uh, it's like good sir, things mm -hmm. like that. Uh, so when Jesus, uh, the word, term Lord was applied to Jesus, I think in the Greek it's like kurios. That, that just meant that, you know, he's... He's kind of like, you know, he's like any of these others. He's not really unique. When, when actually, in, in Greek, uh, Lord does have a range of meaning, and it is possible in some cases that it can mean sir. Okay, but uh, when Jesus accepted worship, all right, unless Badawi is willing to worship Jesus, then he's got to admit that the understanding of Jesus in the Gospels, the understanding of Jesus himself as represented in the Gospels, uh, is, is something that Badawi deliberately disbelieves. Right, because he he already admits that John 1, 1 means what it says. Mm -hmm. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God. Right. And he admits that there's a lot of passages, such as the one you mentioned in the previous show, uh, Philippians chapter 2, about every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the ba Lord. Bow bowing to them, including Muhammad, you know, exactly. including Badawi. So mm -hmm. that word Lord there can mean nothing else but Lord of the universe. Right. So, so, uh, so, so Badawi, in one sense, he's correct in that Lord could mean sir in one spot, but that doesn't mean that it means that in every place. Right. And he willfully here in this argument or ignores passages like that because he admits already that, that they really say that in the yeah. Bible. He just doesn't believe it. That's yeah. all and, it is. And, and Jesus said, you know, you call me Lord and Master, and that's who I am, but, you know, you have to do what he says. And one last thing before we move on to the next uh, tape here. Uh, he says, well, Son of God. You know, that doesn't mean anything because there's lots of sons of God, you know, and the Bible talks, tells a lot of people are sons of God. But, but, so but, that, but, but is Badawi saying that Jesus said he was son of God because, it, or is he saying others say that? Because in a previous tape, you had said he said he said that Jesus didn't say he was son of God. Right. So he's, he's basically, he's talking about how some Christians use that term as a, 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 a apologetic to show that Jesus is God. And just because someone says Jesus is God, or is the Son of God, that doesn't mean He's God. 
And that's his basic argument. The uh, Son uh, of God can just mean, like, uh, you know, it's not unique. All right, but, but just to end, end all question about this, all right, Jesus said in John 10, uh, 36, the last half, he says, you know, um, why then do you accuse me of blasphemy? Because I said, I am God's son. Okay, God's son, son of God, you know, the, the, the right, same thing. And right. so Jesus himself um, said he was the son of God. That's right. So once again, I wanted to give you a shot at that because okay. there's viewers watching or seeing these arguments against and we need to deal with some of this. That's why we're here, as a matter of fact. But let's go on now to the, now that we've shown uh, how these arguments against Christ and the Bible and things don't work. Let's go on to tape, uh, tape number eight now in Battle series. This one's entitled, Did Jesus Claim Divinity? Other claims, Jesus denies Godhood. Uh, A, Badawi does not believe Jesus said words in Mark 13 about the generation passing away because the prophecy did not come true. B, Badawi dismisses all Bible passages where Jesus is worshipped, such as Hebrews chapter 1, verse 6, because the word worship only means intense love, end quote. C, since Badawi does not believe the Trinity, he does not understand Bible passages that discuss the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, such as Matthew 28:19. D. Jesus and God are not equal. 1 Corinthians 11:3. The head of Christ is God. E. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, uh, verse 6. One God, one Lord Jesus Christ. Badawi says this shows a clear distinction between God and Jesus. F. Matthew 23, 8 through 10. Badawi says Jesus directly denied he was God here because he shows the distinction between them. Badawi draws the distinction between master, which he says does not mean God, just a teacher or leader, as Badawi says, and the Father, which is God. G. James 1.13. God cannot be tempted with evil. Uh, Badawi says, therefore, Jesus cannot be God because he was tempted with evil in Matthew 4 and Luke 4 by the devil. H. Mark thirteen thirty two Son does not know the hour, the day or the hour. By the way, Jesus cannot be God. I, Matthew, uh, Mark fourteen thirty two thirty five. By the way, says Jesus cannot be God because God does not pray to God. J. By the way, says Jesus didn't even know what was going to happen to him uh, because Jesus in Mark fourteen thirty six whether didn't know whether he'd be crucified or not or something else. Therefore, Jesus could not be God. K. Badawi quotes what he calls devout Christians, such as Jehovah's Witnesses, Reverend Armstrong, Unitarians, uh, throughout his tapes to back up his arguments. Here he quotes from John Hick from his book, The Myth of God Incarnate. End quote. Mark 13 prophecy no good? The word can be race, not just generation. Therefore, the Jewish race would be preserved throughout history until all this was fulfilled. Modern and accurate Bible translations mention this fact in the footnotes, but Badawi's outdated RSV would not. For more information, see R.C. Sproul's book, The Last Days According to Jesus. Worship can mean simply intense love. If Badawi himself really believed his own words, then he would have no problem with Muslims, as well as Christians, worshiping Jesus, at least in some sense, and calling Jesus their Lord. Thomas called Jesus, my Lord and my God, in John chapter 20, verse 28. We commend Badawi for acknowledging that Muslims ought to be calling Jesus their Lord, meaning Master, in Matthew 23, verses 8 through 10. If that is what he is really saying by the word worship, intense love. Badawi does not seem to understand the Trinity. Many who reject the Trinity either ignorantly misunderstand or deliberately distort what it means. If someone says the Trinity teaches multiple gods, that is as false as saying mainstream Islam teaches worship of Muhammad. The Trinity teaches one inseparable God in three distinct persons. Badawi willingly ignores this fact. The head of Christ is God. There is no difference in nature, Philippians 2, verses 6 and 7, or our honor of one over the other, found in John chapter 5, verses 18 through 23. There is a difference in role and rank. Besides this passage, Note that the Father sent the Son, 
and the Son never sent the Father. On earth, the Son obeyed the Father. Hebrews 5, 8. Not the other way around. Jesus said in John 10, 30, quote, I and my Father are one. One God, one Lord Jesus. The term God in the Bible sometimes means just Jesus, sometimes just the Father, sometimes just the Spirit, and sometimes all three. This passage does indeed show a distinction, but not separation between the Father and Son. For further information, contact Christian Answers for free information on the biblical doctrine of the Trinity. Master here is not the Father. Badawi's misconception of the Trinity ignores the fact of a distinction between the Father and Master, Jesus, thereby leading to the error that the Master is not God. Again, a distinction between them is a fundamental core of the true Trinity doctrine, and the only contradiction is in Badawi's misconception. God cannot be tempted with evil. If Jesus had only a divine nature, Badawi would be correct. However, Jesus was human also. And as a human, Jesus was tempted. See Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11, Hebrews chapter 2, verses 9 through 11, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 47. Son does not know the hour. On earth, Jesus did not know the hour of his return because Philippians chapter 2, verse 7 and John 17, 5 show that Jesus voluntarily emptied himself of much of his divine glory when he came to earth. The Bible explains how Jesus could not know certain things. However, Badawi simply does not believe the Bible explanations. God does not pray to God. Behind this objection is a major Muslim misunderstanding of the true place of prayer. Jesus prays in John 17, 5, quote, And now, O Father, glorify now me with thine own self, with the glory I had with thee before the world was, end quote. In Psalm 2, God tells people to trust his son or perish. God is not limited in prayer or activity by what Badawi thinks God cannot do. Jesus did not know if he would be crucified. Once again, Dr. Badawi misleads his unfortunate audience with deceptive claims. The Bible record, which Badawi simply refuses to believe, clearly states that Jesus knew ahead of time of his impending death and crucifixion. See Matthew chapter 16 verses 21 through 23, Matthew chapter 20 verses 17 through 19, Luke chapter 24 verses 25 through 27, also verse 46, Mark chapter 8 verses 31 through 33, Mark chapter 9 verse 12, 14 verses 36, 39, 41, 49, the Gospel of John chapter 5 verses 39 through 47, Acts chapter 2 verses 23, 29 through 36, Acts chapter 4, verses 10 through 12, and many other verses could be cited. Falsely refers to devout Christians. Jehovah's Witnesses, Unitarians, Mormons, who, by the way, believe they will become gods of their own planet someday, etc., can hardly be considered to be devout Christians. By the same token, it could be dishonestly stated that heretical Muslim, Sufi, Bektashi, Alawite, and other Gulak groups were devout Muslims. Of course, Dr. Badawi would then disagree strenuously. Okay, what we have here, Steve, I want to take a break because I'm doing a lot of talking here. I want to let you talk a little so I can catch my breath. Uh, in 2019... Uh, and other passages related, relating to the Trinity is that many people don't understand what the Trinity, they're against the Trinity, but they don't even know what it is. And the Trinity says there's only one God who's in three persons, Father, Son, and Spirit. Uh, all three are God, uh, but, but there's no fighting or anything among them. And, and, is it, uh, and you're not talking about three gods. Right. You're not and, talking and, about and, three and, gods. And, and actually, way back in 400 A.D., uh, Patrick of Ireland, he said to have an illustration of a cloverleaf. And is a cloverleaf one leaf or three? 
Well, if the Irish chieftain would say it's three, he'd say, no, it's one, because it's all connected in the center. And if they say it's one, he says, no, it's three, because it has three lobes. So it's three distinct persons, but one inseparable God. Now, as far as all the passages in which it, it, it appears to show that Jesus is less than the Father, and there are other passages that show that Jesus is equal to the Father, like all on the sons and on the Father, okay, first you have to understand that Jesus was less than the Father while on earth because he emptied himself. Well, that goes back to Philippians chapter 2, right. which you've already mentioned. Right. And then second, you have to understand that they do have different roles, and there is the role of the Father, which is a greater role than the subordinate role of the Son, but they are equal in nature and in and, and honor. So, uh, so understanding just very briefly that about the Trinity, every verse in the Bible, uh, and we and we have videos on this and on uh, newsletters as well. Okay, we got our newsletter here that's free to anyone that wants to get into an in-depth biblical study of all the passages dealing with this whole idea of the biblical concept of God. We even got your article there, Steve. Okay. But the seven simple facts about the Trinity. Steve gives a lot of great biblical information here. Uh, in this study on what the Bible says about the Trinity. But we're not talking about three gods. Right. And when, when Battle is talking about all this stuff here, particularly when he brings up uh, you know, the difference that Jesus uh, and, and, and the Father are different, or Jesus is praying to the Father, it shows a distinction of people, or he says the head of Christ is God. Uh, you know, there's one Lord, or there's one God and one Lord Jesus Christ. He says, look, there's a separation, therefore there has to be two different gods. Mm -hmm. uh, and, it, and it can't be. See, he's forgetting the fact that we're talking about one being of God, and within the nature of the one being of God are three eternally distinct persons. Now, you had a point you're going to finish. I want to let well, you. Well, the, the 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 other thing you have to understand uh, to understand how all these passages aren't explained away. As with the Trinity, but they're actually important for understanding the Trinity. But another point is the you have to understand is the incarnation. Okay, God is almighty. He can do anything he wants. If he wanted to appear as a burning bush to Moses, he has the power to do so. If he wanted to appear as an angel, he has the power to do so. If he wanted to appear as a man, and not only appear as a man, but actually be a man, he has the power to do so. And when Jesus Christ was on earth, Jesus was 100% God, and Jesus was also 100% man. And it's not like a human body with two brains. There was there was one brain that was Jesus. Okay, but um, being... Uh, having the nature of God and nature of man. And so as man, you know, uh, yes, Jesus could pray to God. Jesus could suffer hunger. He could be tempted, okay? But he did not succumb to, succumb to temptation. The other thing you have to understand is that when the word God is used in the Bible, um, it has different meanings. In some cases, there, it, there's like there are gods many. There are false gods as well as one God. And so God in the Bible sometimes refers to the Trinity. Sometimes it refers only to God the Father. Sometimes it refers to God the Son. Sometimes it refers to God the Spirit. And in fact, in one place in Hebrews, it says, Therefore God, your God, in the same verse, the first God um, refers to the Son, and the second God refers to the Father. Mm -hmm. So understanding that, all of these problems, or, or alleged problems, just vanish. They do. They vanish totally. And, in, in, and most of Badawi's arguments here is he brings up Bible verse after Bible verse on, on a lot of his tapes, if he, if he would just stop for a second and understand what the Christians are saying by the biblical doctrine of the Trinity. But see, he refuses to believe it or understand the position. I at least try to understand the Islamic position. You know, I like to... We put many hours trying to understand That's right. It, yeah. I, I try to accurately understand what the Muslim believes and teaches from the Quran, the Hadith, and so forth. I don't try to just make up a straw man argument about something he doesn't really believe, and then attack it. But see, this is exactly what Badawi's doing throughout his arguments from these Bible verses he brings up. We don't, we're not tritheists. We're not polytheists. We don't believe in a bunch of gods. We believe in one God. But Badawi refuses to accept what we say that we believe. Now, I don't do that to him. I don't think, Steve, when you're looking at all these different Islamic groups and, and I, religions... I, I, I try to represent them as, as accurately as possible. Right, but when he's representing us, he refuses to, to allow us our position, and he sets up a straw man argument so he can knock it down, which is, which is totally uh, fallacious from a logical point of view. It just doesn't hold water. And uh, it, once you can understand this doctrine... Uh, of what Christians really believe, that they only believe in one God, and within the nature of the one God is 
the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, then all these arguments he brings up, really, like you said, they vanish. Mm -hmm. Well, we've got to move along. We've got more that we can deal with, and there'll probably be some redundancy here. Uh, tape number nine, responses to objections and biblical parallels. A, battle we hear reiterates his apologetic of negation, as he calls it, and denial of basic Christian beliefs. B, battle we attacks the deity of Christ and says that his contention is supported by the context of the Bible, end quote. C, John 14, 28, my father is greater than I. Battle uses this verse to attack the deity of Christ and says any other explanation is illogical. D, Battle denies the God-man nature of Christ, which Steve was just talking about. Battle does not accept the dual nature of Christ being 100% man and 100% God. See, he's denying our right to believe what we want. Okay, uh, Badawi says, and this is the next point, Badawi says the term father used by Jesus means creator. And Jesus, by using the term father, is simply acknowledging that he is a creature and a servant of the creator. So so would Badawi call Allah father? Or not, you think, Larry? Uh, you're, that's another excellent point. Yeah, and and I, I don't I, think I, he would. I, I don't know the answer for that, for sure. I don't sure. think he would, but that is an excellent point to bring up. Okay, going back to the chart, F, Badawi says Christians are guilty of, quote, prior theological commitment, end quote, rather than using objective information. That's, that's an interesting phrase coming from him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in fact, we don't even need to answer that one. Let's say, G, uh, Badawi says Jesus was not unique because, one, Jesus had a mother, two, other prophets in the Bible did miracles, and three, uh, brought message like other prophets brought messages. Did and, Muhammad accept worship? I don't think so. And then H, Badawi says the virgin birth of Jesus does not prove the divinity of Jesus because look at Melchizedek in Hebrews chapter 7, verses 1 through 3, who was without father or mother. Look at Adam. He didn't have a father or a mother. And look at Eve, he says, who... Uh, you know, came from a rib. Right. So these are his arguments in this tape. Badawi never correctly defines the Trinity. Badawi does not correctly define the Trinity before he tries to refute it. It is a logical fallacy to misrepresent an opposing opinion and then try to refute the opinion based on the misrepresentation rather than its truthful position. Perhaps Badawi should say that the Bible does not support his misconception of the Trinity. Father simply means creator? If Badawi himself really thought Jesus' use of the word Father was proper because it simply meant creator, then we commend Badawi for saying Muslims should use the word Father for God also. The fact of the matter is that Muslims simply do not believe in calling Allah Father. Jesus is said to be the Creator in Colossians chapter 1, verses 1 through 18, and the Gospel of John chapter 1, verse 10. Prior theological commitment? Badawi saying Christians suffer from prior theological commitment is not like the pot calling the kettle black. Rather, it is like the pot calling the rest of the world black. Badawi cannot accept the Bible was preserved by God due to his prior theological commitment. And Badawi cannot even understand the Trinity, let alone accept it, due to his prior theological commitment. While we have not seen every single tape Badawi has made, we have yet to see a tape where Badawi clearly, thoroughly, and correctly explains the Trinity before he attacks it which is obviously due to his prior theological commitment. Jesus is not unique. The Bible teaches that Jesus is unique. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 states, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. See also 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19, which says, God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. There are 456 Old Testament prophecies and their inferences 
referring to the unique Messiah who is Jesus Christ. Moreover, the Father judges no one, but has entrusted all judgment to the Son, that all may honor the Son, just as they honor the Father. He who does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. So John 5, 22 and 23 says that all are to honor the Son just as they honor the Father. Now, either... And you're saying just as they honor. So right. you're talking about equal honor. Right. Equal honor. So, so, so either someone has to say, like some Muslims say, that oh, well, this must have been written later, even though we have copies of, of, of John from about you know 100 to 150 A.D., or they have to say that they refuse to listen to Jesus' words, or they have to start honoring Jesus as they honor the Father. That's right. And, and, and looking at some of these other arguments of the battle we make, so we mentioned about Jesus uh, had a mother, and he wasn't unique because of that, and, and he brings well, up well, Adam. He, he, and, he, 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 he didn't have a biological father, and so I guess that was conveniently left off. <laughs> uh, right. Uh, to me, it's, 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 it's all absurd uh, when you look at these 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 arguments that that he makes, because he talks about his arguments are valid because they take in the whole context of the Bible. Well, he's he can't be telling the truth about that because he's already saying that any verse that doesn't agree with what he says, it doesn't count. It's an interpolation. It's it's been corrupted. It's written. Paul said or John said. So how can he be taking it in context with the Bible? When he's dismissing any Bible verse that disagrees with his yeah. contention on, on, already. On, on one hand, he seems to me he seems to be really reaching on some, on on some of his arguments, and on the other hand, he's conveniently silent about uh, contra evidence. Exactly. Now, let me just read something very quickly here for the audience on this. There's some names of Jesus, and I'm just going to read these names of Jesus, and we'll look at what they're talking about in context of the Bible. Uh, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, Prince of Peace. Mighty God, Wonderful Counselor, Holy One, Lamb of God, Prince of Life, Lord God Almighty, Lion of the Tribe of Judah, Root of David, Word of Life, Author and Finisher of our Faith, Advocate, The Way, Day Spring, Lord of All, I Am, Son of God, Shepherd and Bishop of Souls, Messiah, The Truth, Savior, Chief Cornerstone, King of Kings, Righteous Judge, Light of the World, Head of the Church, Morning Star, Son of Righteousness, Lord Jesus Christ, Chief Shepherd, Resurrection and Life, Horn of Salvation, Governor, the Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end. Now, these are, these are just some of the terms for Jesus in the Bible. And taking it in the context of the whole Bible, of which Badaway only takes the parts he wants, it looks fairly clear here that his arguments that he gives here are fairly lame if you just compare him to what was just said here about some of his titles, just some mm -hmm. of his titles, you know, mighty God. I mean, I mean, it, it just doesn't wash. So let us move on to tape number 10, deification of Jesus. It's evolution, no basis for Trinity, disciples and Paul. Point A, Badawi begins his negating the Trinity attacks on this tape. B, Badawi quotes what he calls biblical scholars who do not believe the Trinity. C. Badawi quotes from a Jehovah's Witness Bible, a New World Translation, in relation to 1 John 5 7. D. Badawi says 1 John 5 7 does not belong in the Bible. E. Badawi says Trinity has no foundation in either the Old Testament or the New Testament. F. Badawi is constantly saying his contentions are backed up by biblical scholars, but he never quotes more than one or two, and he never quotes any biblical scholar that actually believes what the Bible teaches. G. Badawi, without giving documentation for where this story comes from, says that the Apostle Paul wanted to get married to an actress, Popey. Popeye, who, probably. Or Popeye, I guess. who was the daughter of the high priest of the Jews. Popeye refused Paul's marriage proposal and went instead to Rome for an acting career where she ended up getting married to the Roman emperor. This incident took place at the same time when Paul converted to Christianity, meaning Paul was under mental duress. I've never heard this before. <laughs> H. Badawi says Paul got to know Barnabas, without whom Paul never would have been accepted in the Christian community. And I. Badawi says Barnabas was the most important disciple of Jesus. End quote. 
The Bible clearly teaches the doctrine of the Holy Trinity. The doctrine of the Trinity emerges from the New Testament scriptures in several key places. The incarnation of Jesus, found in Luke chapter 1, verse 35. The baptism of Jesus, Matthew chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. The baptism of Christian believers, found in Matthew 28, 19. The resurrection of Jesus, Acts chapter 3, verse 26. God the Father will raise Jesus. John chapter 2, 19 through 21. Jesus says he will raise himself. Romans chapter 8, verse 11. The Spirit will raise Jesus. The Bible clearly teaches the doctrine of the Trinity. Namely, the nature of the one true God is revealed in three eternally distinct persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Creation of the world, Psalms 100, verse 3, Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 6, creation by God the Father, John chapter 1, verse 3, Colossians chapter 1, verses 16 and 17, the Son created the world, Job 33, 4, Job 26, 13, Genesis 1, 2, the Holy Spirit created the world. Each person of the Trinity is eternal. Psalm 93, 2 refers to the Father. Micah chapter 5, verse 2, and Isaiah 9, 6 refers to the Son. Hebrews 9, 14 refers to the Spirit. All have inspired scripture. 2 Timothy 3, 16 refers to the Father. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 10 refers to the Son. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 21 refers to the Spirit. All three are called God. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6, John chapter 6, verse 27, refers to the Father as God. John chapter 1, verse 1, and chapter 20, verse 28, Romans chapter 9, verse 5, all refer to Jesus, the Son, as God. Acts chapter 5, verses 3 and 4, refer to the Holy Spirit as God. The Bible negates Dr. Badawi. Badawi's reference to 1 John 5, 7. Rejecting a passage that is generally rejected today does not negate everything else. We have numerous Bible manuscripts of 1 John 5, 6 through 8, and 1 John 5, 7 is not in any manuscript before the 12th century. It was added later in the margin of a 10th century manuscript. It is in a total of only eight late manuscripts. Badawi is correct. This was not in the original Bible. But he could know this simply from reading the footnotes in the NIV Bible, a modern translation, and noting the verses go from 5.6 to 5.8. Badawi's 1 John 5.7 argument is particularly weak and does not disprove the Trinity. Foundation of the Trinity in the Old Testament. Even though the New Testament is much clearer, here are verses for a foundation of the Trinity using just the Old Testament. Proverbs chapter 30 verse 4. What is his name and the name of his son? Tell me if you know. Joel chapter 2 verse 27. Psalm 83 verse 18. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verses 35 through 39. Deuteronomy chapter 6 Verse 4, the Hebrew word for indivisible one is not used here, but rather a broader word. Second Samuel chapter 7, verse 22, Isaiah chapter 42, verses 10 through 12, chapter 44, 6 through 8, and verse 24. Isaiah chapter 45, verses 5 through 14, and Isaiah chapter 46, verse 9. Undocumented slander of Paul. We have read much of the early church fathers, and we have seen neither this or even a refutation of this, that being Dr. Badawi's reference to Paul having a love affair with an actress. Later Muslims made up many hadiths about Muhammad that were universally acknowledged by Muslims as false, and perhaps this falls in that category. But we do not know when prior to the 20th century this was fabricated. There is a biblical term for what Badawi is saying about Paul. 
casting aspersions on someone with no evidence whatsoever is called slander. The probability of Paul having a love interest in an actress who went on to marry a Roman emperor is more likely Islamic Hollywood than actual fact. Importance of Barnabas Badawi has no genuine basis for his claims about Barnabas. Badawi simply wants his uninformed listeners to believe in a medieval Italian forgery called the Gospel of Barnabas. Among other things, the Gospel of Barnabas mentions knights sailing from Palestine to the inland city of Jerusalem and calls Muhammad the Messiah and says Jesus was not, which is contrary to what the Quran teaches. Badawi is mentioning all these biblical scholars and sometimes Christian biblical scholars and then he uses a Jehovah's Witness Bible. Uh, of course, we as true born-again Christians who actually accept what the Bible says, we don't accept a lot of what Badawi calls Christian or necessarily he, said he calls these people scholars, but I'm not really familiar with the people he quotes as even being scholars. They may be a scholar, I'm not sure, but one thing's for sure, they don't believe the Bible. And uh, when you get guys like John Hick that he's, he's quoted that uh, you know, says that the myth of the God incarnate uh, doctrine or whatever that was from, uh, that we mentioned earlier, uh, you know he's picking people that would attack and support his claims rather than against him. So, but he makes it in his tapes look like all the scholars agree with him. And that's another logical fallacy. He's really card stacking, which is a logical fallacy. But Okay, tape 11. Deification of Jesus' evolution, Paul's role, early Unitarians. A. Badawi says there are two giants of the Christian faith, Paul and Barnabas. B. Badawi says that Paul was not an eyewitness of Jesus, but Barnabas was. C. Badawi says Paul compromised and changed things. D. Badawi says that Paul later wanted to get rid of Barnabas, so he could say his new ideas. Hmm. Because Acts 15, 36 through 41. That's misinterpreted, all right. Okay. E, Paul introduced innovations, and the Apostle Peter went along with Paul on this with support of Luke, Badawi says. F, Badawi says Paul knew he was lying about blood atonement, deification of Jesus, etc., but taught it anyway. G, by early and original Christian standards and doctrines, Badawi says Paul was a heretic. H. Badawi says many scholars and historians, end quote, say Paul was a heretic and introduced, quote, innovations, end quote, which were not true. Are these all Muslim uh, scholars and historians <laughs> or, or atheist scholars and historians? Right. And I, Badawi says the original apostolic church of Christians were Unitarians and not Trinitarians. Paul was a heretic and an innovator? Badawi has major problems in his historical and evidential research in regard to his claims about the Apostle Paul being a heretic and innovator. His spurious accusations against Paul are easily refuted by any honest researcher. For further information on this subject, please see Ronald H. Nash's book, The Gospel and the Greeks, published 2003, P&R Publishing, New Jersey or contact Christian Answers for references concerning many additional sources. The Apostolic Church Unitarian? No, even as far back as 1st Clement, 9798 AD, the early church showed the relationship between the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Ignatius of Antioch wrote many times of Jesus as God, and he was a disciple of the Apostle John. The term Trinity was used by Theophilus of Antioch, 168 to 181 to 188 A.D. The Bible clearly, the early church as well, teaches that Jesus is God, a fact that Unitarian heretics would never accept. Badawi should know better. Tape 12, Deification of Jesus, its evolution, early Unitarians, Council of Nicaea. Badawi says, this point one, or A, Badawi says all of the early and original Christians were non-Trinitarian Unitarians. It was not until the pagan Roman Emperor Constantine came to power and enforced the notion of the Trinity on the people. B, Badawi says a great Christian Unitarian champion named Arius 
was uh, persecuted by Bishop Alexander, who could not refute Arius's great arguments. Arius called Jesus God. Now, Arius had problems, and he was a heretic. He thought there was a time before Jesus was, but he basically is misrepresenting Arius, even though Arius is a heretic. And C, Badawi gives a history of Arius and says that Arius used logical reason in his arguments, but the Trinitarian adversaries used faulty contradictions that could not hold up. D, Badawi states that there is a tremendous difference between a Unitarian God and a Unitarian God. You can, yeah, that's true. Anyway, E. So, so, so hold on. Muslims and Christians do not worship the same God, then Badawi and us can at least agree on that point. That's right. That's a lie when people say Christians and Muslims worship the same God. And even Badawi would agree with that as far as uh, what he's talking about in these tapes. E. Badawi gives his so-called unbiased version of the Council of Nicaea, 325 A.D. One, the Council had 270 different Gospels. Two, the Council was under pressure to pass a Trinity Doctrine by Constantine. Three, the Council canonized some of the 270 Gospels, including their version of the Gospel of John, and burned all the other manuscript Gospels. Four, the Council approved of the Trinity, despite there being no conclusive evidence for the doctrine. Five, and finally, the Council approved that the Holy Spirit was God, despite no evidence for this. Okay, that, can, that uh, completes tape 12. What do you have to say, Steve? Well, uh, first of all, his 200 different Gospels, I have no idea where he got this, except if there were roughly 250 bishops at the Council of Nicaea. Mm -hmm. That's like saying there are 1.1 billion uh, a, a, a Muslim messages because there are 1.1 billion Muslims. That's not an accurate statement. And by the way, it, it, he's just, I just don't see how he could say he's even being truthful here, to, 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 to be quite honest. Uh, there's no evidence for all of this. He misrepresents Arius. I've read all about the Council of Nicaea. I've read Athanasius' works. Uh, you know, we've read some of the statements uh, by, by Arius. And the, and, and the fact that the Trinity was, the word was in use prior to 325 A.D. by Theophilus of Antioch, uh, roughly 188 um, A.D. So how this all came about, um, either he's ignorant of early church history or he's it looks to me like he's telling lies. And uh, and for the sake of the viewer, is there any reference works you can refer them to to sure. check into this it, themselves? Uh, they, they, uh, uh, they, they, there's the, 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 the history, uh, there's the Early Church Fathers, which is a very, uh, uh, it's like nine volumes, uh, five, eight or nine volumes uh, pre, uh, for pre-Nicene Church Fathers, where you can basically read for yourselves what they said. Um, and then there's, there's another series about the, Ni the Nicene Fathers, Series 1 and Series 2. And just read for yourself what, what, what they say. Now, I will tell you that they tend to be very verbose, and they, t and they love to quote Scripture a lot, so there's a lot of reading to do. Uh, but you can really see, and also on our, our website, you know, we will have stuff on the Early Church Fathers. What is that website? Uh, www.muslimhope.com. Uh, where we'll have with the early church fathers. We also did a show on showing Jesus is God where he showed statements by early Christians, including some of these people, showing that Jesus was God, and they were all prior to like 250 A.D., which in Nicaea was 325 A.D. a series on understanding uh, Muslims in the Islamic faith. Right, right, right. Uh, uh, thank you for your time. I'm Larry Wessels with Steve Morrison for Christian Answers. Join us again next time. And remember, and I'm going to repeat this because Badawi doesn't like it, but John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. He didn't say by Muhammad. He said by himself. Thank you for being with us. Trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.